Hi everybody, I hope everybody's fine out there and that you had a safe and happy Halloween. Just getting back into some wiring here around the shop. I um, stopped at the hardware store and picked up some wire so I can uh, add some boxes into my solar system. If you're wondering about what my solar system is, I'll put the link up here um, so you can check it out. I ran into these. These are motion sensing switches. They're also called occupancy sensors or proximity uh, switches. And these have been around a long time. This is nothing new. The technology is getting better in them though and now um, motors and whatnot can be driven with them. Originally I picked this one up. This was a $20 one that I picked up at Lowe's and then I was kicking around in a discount store and I found this in their discount rack for 15 bucks and at first glance I really didn't see much of a difference on the packaging they're rated for about the same um, capacity um, like 250 watt indecent bob or 2 amp ballast so the 30 foot range seems to be pretty normal on these things um, can't really zoom into that one let's see this one says that it will cover up to 900 square feet of coverage and 180 degree view and I think this is the, the same except uh, it's only like 175 degree uh, this is the General Electric and this is the Lutron. So um, I'm going to go ahead and hook these up. So I'll hang out. As you're watching this, I've just done over 51 videos and in that time, I'm sure that you've been in this room more than once. This is where I house the CNC machines. And I have a small little uh, work area set up with a table. And this is where I plan on putting the FERC's proximity sensor. I plan on replacing this normal switch with a one of the two. I haven't decided quite which one yet. It will run these overhead fluorescents. And I haven't been up there yet, but I'm sure I'm under my 2 amp limit. But I will double check that real quick. So uh, let me get some tools together and we will get started. As I'm putting this video together, I realized that I really didn't explain what a, what a proximity switch is. Uh, as you enter the room, the switch notices that you're also in the room and then kicks the lights on for you. And there is a general purpose switch on it that will determine how long the lights stay on after motion is not detected any longer and I think the range is 20 seconds to 20 minutes so if I enter the room with my hands full the lights kick on I leave the room I have it programmed to stay on for 30 seconds and then the lights automatically go off during the day at least six days a week this light stays on uh, for at least eight to nine hours a day so I'm expecting to see some real energy savings just with this one switch as I'm reading the packages of both of these sensors I'm realizing that the specifications on both are almost exactly the same with exactly the same features. Um, instead of taking this one back that I paid 24, I think I'm going to install it in another room and double my energy savings. I know it's going to take some time to get this back, but uh, it's nice having the bobs off too. That way I don't have to replace those as often. So for the first room that I showed you, uh, the CNC workroom, I'm going to use this one that I paid the $15 for and it should fit nicely. Okay, so I've chosen the, the general electric one to use in this little room. Let's go ahead and open it up and find out what we have to deal with here. There's also a switch on here that will ignore motion, so you can use it just like a normal switch. I've never used one 
of these before. I've seen them. I've played with them in the bathroom. I admit it, I've uh, been in the restaurant and I've walked out and walked back in multiple times just so I could see the motion sensor switch work. So that's a real geek for you. <laughs> it comes with the wire nuts and a couple screws. I'm going to read the manual real quick and familiarize myself with it and I'll be back in one moment. Here's what the back of it looks like. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, what I am doing right now is removing this front cover off the switch itself so that I can locate the two adjustable pots that are required adjustment for your, your particular case and room. There should be a little right there, a little screwdriver mark that you can dig into and pull that back just like that. Okay, there they are. The first one on the left is a timer setting that has a test on it and then it goes from 1 to 20 minutes and that would be the amount of time that the room light will stay on after movement has ceased. The one on the right is labeled as light and that one is to adjust the sensor to work best in the particular room that you're putting this in. It will adjust itself better to the available ambient light all right, here we are at this switch that controls the overhead ballast lighting. And the first thing that you want to do is turn off the circuit breaker that controls this switch. Um, I would like to put in a disclaimer here that uh, this is for information purposes only. The things you see here are not necessarily the correct way to do it. It's my way of doing it. And I'm just showing you this for entertainment purposes only. With that in mind, let's get the uh, cover off. You know, I could never figure out why they didn't switch over to the Phillips screw on these things. It makes you go hunting around for these Phillips, or I mean these regular screw bits. I guess they look nicer, I don't know. Do they make uh, Phillips bits on these now? I'm not even sure about that. I just... Springing it up. Okay, I've disconnected the power and I am ready to take my screws out of the wall. That, that hold the actual switch in position. See if my electric one's available. out of the box we have a ground and we have a white and black wire before I actually work on this now that I've got it pulled out of the hole I just want to make sure one more time that there's no power coming down this wall that can harm me so I am putting a multimeter on it set for AC and as expected it's a zero Instead of these being on the actual screws, these are the ones that go into the little prospect. So I had to find a little screwdriver so I could press it down in this little hole and release the wire. Just like that.
Okay, so we have our old one off. Time to put the new one on. Really, it's pretty simple. All we have to do is straighten up all these wires, like this ground has a loop on it from the last install. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim it off anyway. I think it's a little long. I've got all three wires straightened out here so that I'm able to use the wire nuts that come in the kit. And I'm gonna hook up the ground to the bare wire and I'm gonna use the two blacks and hook one to the white and one to the black with the wire nuts. I'm going to use a little bit of electrical tape on each one so that the wires don't come apart. Okay, with everything looking safe and covered, no bare wires, our wire nuts look very secure. Uh, uh, it looks like a clean job. I am going to go ahead and stuff the wires back into the wall and being mindful where they lie uh, because this will be the position that they are in from now on. And locate my screws that came with the kit. Uh, they switched it. Now I'm on a Phillips. Make up your mind people. So it's a fairly nice looking unit. One advantage over the other I noticed um, this one, the one I haven't chosen for this room, the Lutron has a switch that's right here. And just by tapping this switch, I'm guessing that it overrides the whole system. I don't see that feature on here. There's this um, switch here that goes back and forth. And that's kind of like their idea of a, a override switch so I don't know how that's going to work out I'm hoping that the switch is sensitive enough and intelligent enough that it works well enough that I don't never have to touch the manual and that's one of the reasons why I put this particular switch in the smaller room because I did like that other feature on the other one of the tapper Okay, I've got it in the position that it's supposed to be in. I'm just going to dry fit the cover on to make sure that I don't have the screws too tight. This is how it's going to look when it's all buttoned up, but I, I don't want to put it together yet because I do have to mess with these. Okay, so that looks great. I'm going to go ahead and uh, find the fuse box and turn us back on here and we'll be back. Well, just beyond that door is our target. Let's see if it works. I waited five minutes because I had it set for five minutes. Hey! Works great, guys. It was really easy to set up. I left the cover off here because I thought I might have to make a few more adjustments, but uh, I'm 
I'm liking how it's working out right now so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and snap the cover on there and leave it alone for a while and get used to it remembering not to come in and touch the light switch I think that's gonna be the toughest thing uh, this decorative cover I'm just gonna set it on there for now well you know what if I do that I'm gonna lose the screws I take that back I'm gonna go ahead and button it up chances are these settings will be just fine and I won't have to monkey with this thing anymore I'm sure that the GE has thought of all the default settings as being their best there was some instructions on the sheet how to change the ambient room light if you wanted the switch not to come on if you had ample ambient light in the room but I'm just having it come on all the time so there it is works great okay so I have it set up for one minute according to the instructions I figured that will be enough time to stay on I'm just gonna set the tripod down here and put it in the room point it at uh, this wall I'm gonna leave the room for a minute so I don't disturb it and I'll be back Hopefully these lights will go off. Hey, it worked again. Okay, so it looks like it worked out good. I'll have uh, Steve cut that down and edit in so you don't have to wait so long for the light to come on. But I'm really happy with it so far. It's just going to take some time working with it and seeing if I like the settings and making sure that it does work every time. If I find that uh, there's something that needs to be reported, I'll bring it up in future videos. And when I decide where to mount the other brand in the other room, I will also record that. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to thumbs up our videos, subscribe, tell your friends. Uh, we enjoy and appreciate your comments. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.